Texas boxing scene is here with, we'll call you super middleweight, but I know, you, you know, we'll get into your weight. Uh, Justin Williams, uh, former ranked, nationally ranked, uh, ranked by World Boxing uh, Sanctions. Justin Williams, you're back in the ring on June 10th in your home city of Corpus Christi. Uh, how's camp going? How you feeling? Man, camp's going great. This, uh, man, I'm sore right now. It's, uh, it's going good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling strong, man. I'm feeling ready to get this over. I'm really ready to get this over with. Let's get it. So it's we're about three weeks out. Um, the last time we saw you coming off a long layoff, you're at heavyweight, which is a little over 200 pounds. Um, you you won. You took care of business, but obviously that's not your best weight class. That's not where you're going to be in the future. What weight is this at, and and where do you see yourself in the future at, as far as weight class goes? Um, this weight is going to be at 185. I'm trying to fight myself back down to um, super middleweight. If not, I'll be if I can't if I don't make the weight comfortably, I'll be I'll be content with 175. Um, but for the most part, I'm trying to get down to super middleweight for sure. For sure. So the uh the card back in February was the, the, the first card in Corpus Christi in like five years. What was it like to be a part of it, being a, a part of you know the return of boxing in, in, in your home city? Man, that's amazing, man. Um Corpus has showed me nothing but love since I moved out here. Um, my, my hometown is actually Beaumont, Texas, but Corpus Christi is most definitely my second home. I've been here off and on for 10 years. Uh, man, the, the atmosphere out here is amazing, man. The PD, this is really a fight town. The people love boxing here. And so they embrace me with open arms. I love it. You put on a show, you got the win. I, I want to, you know, go back a little bit. You turned pro back in 2010. So that's, uh, 13 years ago. Is that hard to believe that you've been a pro for 13 years now? Yeah, when I look in the mirror, I'm like, it don't look it, man. I don't, I'm not all bruised up. I'm not all punchy, drunk, and I'm, like, I'm cognizant. All my senses are still good. My skills are still sharp. It's, it, it's amazing, man. It's, I, I'm really fortunate on that aspect. And I, it just, I got a lot of experience now. I, I basically had a, I'm 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 on my college education right now. Now I'm, now I'm about to try to step into my professor stuff. You know, start teaching some lessons out here. We're looking forward to seeing that um, uh, on June 10th. Um, I want to go back. Now you didn't have much of an amateur career, but you had a deep uh, karate pedigree. Um, yeah. Talk about that, and then how you transitioned to boxing a little bit later in life. Man, I've been in I've been in karate since I was literally three years old. Um, I've been, I, I probably, the the forms, they have two different things you do in karate as, as far as tournaments go. You do forms and then you do the, the fighting part. And, you know, after a while, I'll probably say like <laughs> six or seven or something. I was, I told my mom, I told my mom, I was like, man, I don't want to do the forms no more. I just want to fight. And so I just rather fight. And uh, from there on, I, all the way to about 15, I made it national twice as a, a 13 or 14 year old. And uh, man, this, I probably say I probably got like maybe 500 karate matches, man. You fight by, you fight right then and there at the tournament. It's probably like, I think you, it depends on how deep the bracket is, man. But you might you might fight three to four times that day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah, I got a lot, a lot, a lot of fights that you know a lot of people don't know about. And I transitioned to boxing, man. I went to a, I went to, um, I always knew I was gonna box, man. Ever since a little kid watching Tyson, man. Um, I ended up going to a job corps in San Marcos, and uh, I met this this uh, old fighter there. He was a coach there, uh, Gary Doverman Dare, Gary the Doverman Dare, and uh, he trained me. And you know, it, it was it's been my it's been my passion ever since. So you you turn pro like I said, twenty ten. You get off to a good start. You get a win in uh, in the Corpus Christi area in Kingsville. Um, you want to know? You get the knockout. Then things go sideways. You fight a six and zero fighters with six knockouts. Uh, Rodolfo Gomez, who's still fighting, fighting on a darn king card coming up. Um, I guess you learned the hard way that this is not, you know, this is this is not a fair and equitable business, right? Like, uh, no, I didn't. I, I, <laughs> I most definitely, most definitely at twenty one. At 21, with the with, you know my the whole world ahead of me, I'm sitting there thinking, man, knowing in my mind, man, I could do this. This ain't this not hard. Like I, I should be able to fight the best and be the best, not knowing that this is a, yeah a legit business. I'm just not. It's this isn't. If you come in this game thinking that you know you're gonna do this that X Y and Z with no management, no backing, no uh, 
no, I'm gonna say juice in the game, man. You're you're sorely mistaken. Jake Paul can sit there and tell y'all I can do this and I can do that. You can do anything in boxing, but let me tell y'all, man. Jake Paul got a million dollars. His training team and staff costs a lot of money. So don't get it twisted, man. You gotta have something. You gotta have something behind you, and you gotta be able to fight at the end of the day. So yeah, no, nah, so it's tough. Take me back to that fight. Your second fight, you beat you beat him soundly. I think they give you a draw, right? They didn't give you an L. They gave you a draw, right? They gave me a draw, yeah. So, what, well, I mean, like, what's going on in your head? Are you done with the sport at that time? Are you just confused? Like, how, what? Like, talk to me about your reaction to hearing a draw. So, my actual two, yeah, it was, it most definitely was, uh, it was hard, it was heartbreaking, man. I, I, coming from nothing and everything that I know as far as a fight, fighting wise, it was like, and they just they took it they kind of they blemished me you know what i mean and uh i'm talking about the, the i want to take you back to the actual fight <laughs> man so i want to say the second round man i end up like breaking his collarbone and he couldn't he was one-handed in there so we're talking about from corner to corner to corner is me on him you know what i'm saying for four rounds straight and uh i think he took a whole year off after that you know what i'm saying so the uh that's the fight game, man. That's that's literally the fight game, and it's it's because we were in his backyard. His 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 show, his promoter put the show on. You know his crowd, his basically everything was for him. I think we were the co-main event right before his uncle or something. And uh, man, that's that's just what it is, man. You gotta have some. You gotta have some some protection. You gotta have some protection behind you in the sport, for sure. So I want to fast forward a little bit. You had the stretch of fights, which, you know, could have put you in, like, world title contention. But, again, you got one decision, but the other two, they kind of take from me again. This is 2011. You're fighting big names, undefeated fighters, you know, top-notch fighters, world-class fighters. You fight in a row in 2011 and early 2012. You fight Abraham Hahn, uh, Raul Casares, and Alfonso Lopez. Oh my God! Okay, you so, in a row. I mean, that's like what, what a world champion would do, right? So, yeah. Um, let's start first. Abraham Han, another one, really, really good fight, close fight. They give it to him unanimously. Um, he's the prospect. He's the undefeated guy. He's you know fights on PBC cards. He's got a lot, a lot of juice behind him. What's your reaction to that? Man, I'm. I, so with these loss before those fights or whatever, it, it it built a lot of hunger, a lot of aggression, and a lot of uh, you know, you got me effed up type stuff. You know what I mean? So, I uh, I and at that point, at that point, I was so pure about it, I didn't care. That was again, this is like my passion. I loved it. So, and I'm a warrior for real. So, with they behind, man, I'm talking. I trained my cousin. I trained in the garage. I didn't even have a trainer. I trained in the garage for probably like three, four weeks. I was already in shape. I'm young, um, fast, and uh, punching. So we uh, we get the call. It's like, man, we we want you to fight on uh, the AB, this card. Uh, I think Terrence Crawford was even on that card. If he might have been fighting for his first world title at the time or something like that, and or or however it goes. So uh, we get out there. I tell my cousin, I'm like, I'm like, hey man, you want to work my corner? My cousin knows nothing about boxing. So we uh we get there, we fight, and this is the first time I've ever been to Denver. They I, we're fighting outside. I'm smelling weed around the around the <laughs> ring and everything. I'm like, man, what the heck? I didn't even know it was like that there. So we uh we make it to the ring, we start fighting. Man, I'm talking. I want to say probably one of the first punches I hit Abraham Hahn with, I split him, and uh he had a he had a cut coming down his face and. He was so confused at a second because of my footwork that he, he really couldn't do much. So then we start, I'm still popping them. I'm popping them up. I don't know if it was a four rounder or a six rounder, but, uh, man, after the fight, man, it, I'm looking at them and they gave it to him unanimously. And I'm like, how? Like, I don't even have a bruise on me or scratch on me or nothing. Like, and so, you know, that, that goes back to the business, man. And, uh, and I was at that time. I think I probably was going against top rank. I think top rank. I was a top rank card, and uh, that was their boy. So yeah, yeah. He, he was you know the thirteen zero prospect. You were three three and one. Yeah. You know on that card was Terrence Crawford. Mike Alvarado was on the card, uh, and, and Roberto Marroquin, um, and and Han. Like those were you know um, those yeah. were the prospects at, at the card. So again, 
knowing the business, it's not surprising that the decision goes against you. But again, that doesn't make it right. Um, you know, in, in a just world, yeah, you get the decision, yeah. but that's their guy, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not what we're living in, and that, yeah, that's their guy. So now, so now I'm kind of I'm I'm understanding the business now, but in my mind at the time, at my young feeble little mind, I'm thinking, man, I just got to knock him out. I just got to beat him. I just got to beat the brakes off of him. That's it. I just, just go in there and kill him. Like so now, so I go back home. Not in the gym, no trainer. I'm, 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 I'm on, my, on the bags, running around my neighborhood like crazy, putting the work in, doing everything I'm supposed to do by myself. And uh, we, I think, I think next was uh, who was it? Raul Castor 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 in the valley, yeah, yeah. Castor Castor valley guy in the valley. And so again, this, yeah. So this one really got me hyped because uh, on a contract, it's supposed to be my first eight round fight, right? So. Yeah. They, and then they got the WBO Youth Intercontinental title. Then they got the Texas title on the line. So I'm like, okay, let's get it. Let's get it. I'm like, I don't care what. I will. I will die for this one. You know. So uh, I uh, we get there on the scales. Dude, look at me crazy. Talk. You know, he's doing his little talking and stuff. And uh, the I want to say I think it was the promoter. Or or somebody they were like, hey man, they're not they're not gonna give you an eight round fight right now. And I was like, I was looking, I was like, what? And uh, I was like, uh, they gonna make it a six rounder? They told me they gonna make it a six round. I'm like, or well, the title still gonna be on the line? They was like, no. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool, whatever. I think dude dude looked at me when I stepped on the scale and was kind of shook already. And uh, another fight, you can watch that fight on YouTube, man. Dude hit me low by three, four times in the fight. I think it was that that fourth, that that third one or whatever. And you know, I, I had, he hit me so hard, bro. I felt my, it felt like my nuts went in my ass. Down. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. So I took the little break or whatever. But I was like, man, you watch the fight, bro. I, you can watch it on YouTube, man. Dude, after the fight was all swollen, he was I, as a, after that fight. Right after that fight, the writer there, he was like, "We end, I end up going to somewhere to go get my check." And then he was there. He, Raul was there. The writer was there. And as soon as I walk in, the writer is like, "Champ, champ, champ!" I'm like, "Bro, like, I'm like, I'm, I'm still mad because, bro, you can, you can champ that all you want, but I still lost." And uh, the promoter gave me my check, and Raul was there with his family. It's, he, he just, he couldn't even look at me, bro. He was all bruised up and beat up, and. I honestly want to say I'm the first person that actually made him punch you, man. To be honest with you, you listen to him. <laughs> yeah, talk if you right talk now. to him now, good guy. He's a little, yeah, yeah he's yeah, a little punchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he he always tell me he and he always tell, he is a good guy. He's a good person, man. He he always tell me, um, bro, man, you you're the hardest fight I ever had. I don't care who who I fought, even after you, bro. You was the toughest fight. I was like, all right, man, man, that's cool, bro. But you know. I still want my rematch, but I don't think I don't think it's the same no more. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just I'm just bitter about it. So it is what it is. It didn't keep you down because you came back early in uh, 2012 on a Paul Williams card, one of my all time favorite fighters yes. in your yes. home city, Corpus Christi. Again, you go in, you find Alfonso Lopez, who's from Houston, I think, right? Yes. Um, and uh, well, take it away. What happens in that fight? Okay, so man already at the weigh-ins and this is me being retarded too again like at the weigh-ins you know um sam watson you know out of nowhere they had a, they had a couple prospects on there the uh that that company whatever that he works for he's like are you with us and i was looking i'm like nah, bro. No. Yeah. <laughs> like uh I'm in, I'm in kingsville training with uh my finally finally got a, a training camp finally got a trainer and a training camp behind me uh who are you training the- with in kingsville uh, Jaime Cantu and uh, great coach, great yeah, coach, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm out there working with Jaime Cantu. Um, he gets the call, man. And there was a fight previously before that. I think it's the Dia Davis fight. We're in a hotel room at another fight with them, and uh, we're watching Alfonso Lopez and and not everybody like, bro, this guy kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> everybody like, man, this dude kind of suck. And I'm like, wow. I was like, man, this dude fighting for a world title though, like. You know what I'm saying? This dude fighting for the for the belt, for the straps. And uh lo and behold, I'm in camp probably like um 
two months after that, and uh, we get a call. Was, he calls me to the office. He's like, hey, man, you, you want to fight Alfonso Lopez? I was like, yep. He was like, you ain't going to think about it? Nope. And it was like, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. I just watched it. I, we just watched them together. It was like, all right, let's do it. He's like, you're going to have to move up and wait. And I was like, because right then and there, I was probably fighting around like 154. It's my first time stepping up. And even on the scale, I was like 161. I couldn't even. I, I The biggest, the most I probably weighed at the time was probably 175. And if you know anything about Kingsville or anything about Texas and the heat over here down there in the summertime, Man, you ain't even got to work too hard to keep that weight off, man. It's like 110, 105 out, out there. You know what I'm saying? So we, uh, I got on the scale, got right. Then a the fight come, talking about, man, it's amazing, amazing atmosphere. We're talking 7,600 people in the stands, Showtime, Don King's there, uh, Chris Ariola fights, Tra- Tavares Cloud, he's on the card. Uh, man, it's, and at that time, Tavares was like, Tavares was the thundercloud, you know what yeah. I mean? He was the man. So, and I really, he, I really think he lost that night too, bro, watching them win Shalumba. Uh, who else was there? Uh, Paul man, Williams. Paul, Paul Williams. Williams. Man, yeah. Paul, I, I meet Paul Williams at the weigh in. I'm, I'm standing next to this man and I'm like, I'm t- I used to always tell myself, I, I, at 154, I was like, man, I gotta fight this guy, right? I gotta fight this guy. Like, Man, I stand next to this man. This man like six three, six four almost. I'm like, what? The, how are yeah. you? How are you making 147 <laughs> pounds? <laughs> like that don't even sound right. So, uh, so next thing I know, I um spend the night, man. I man, I almost envision. It's like the night before the the fight. It's like, it's like, man, you can env- envision and imagine every little scenario play out in your head about the fight, right? It's like a premonition or something. And man, I get in there, and you know, I'm thinking he's gonna be. I'm thinking he's gonna be the Alfonso Lopez of Kelly Pavlik. Like he probably ain't gonna take me too serious, so he might come out gunning and stuff. And he and he did. He did for like the first thirty seconds. Then I started punching back, and it was you know settled them down. Yeah, yeah, settled them real quick. I'm talking about the first little clean connect. They that the so I bust his nose. And the, um, you can hear him on the commentator say. We got blood from somewhere. Yeah, that was me touching him real quick. And he wipes his, uh, he had white shorts on. He wipes his nose, then he wipes his shorts, and the blood smears across his pants. And uh, that's the first round. So the second round, I'm talking about we we in it. And I'm a, I catch, I can, I'm a catch what's called, what I like to call tunnel vision, man. It's like where you're, all I can see for real is the chin, the shoulders, and the body for real. And I, I end up catching it on him in the second round. And, uh, I clipped him, man, and here it is. I'm I'm three, five, and one fighting a guy twenty two and two with, you know, what I'm saying just fought for a world title in the fight. I, I want to put that in perspective, right? His two losses is a split decision loss to Kelly Pavlik, right, and then the loss to Daya Davis, right. So I mean, this is a guy they have hopes for, right? I mean, he had a split decision to pa- Pavlik, who you know became the undis- well unified. Was he undisputed? I, I think he was undisputed. Right? I think he, I think he was undisputed when yeah, he, when he, yeah, I think he when was. He yeah. yeah. So yeah, no nah, man, that that uh that let me know. That let me that fight right there let me know like, bro, you you belong here, bro. You you got to get your stuff together. I'm talking about a, a swift a swift I catch like I said I catch the tunnel vision in the second round, a swift 3 and a 2. I stepped I stepped into the 2 and I sat him down. They said I was the first person to ever knock him down. And I'm like, bro, yeah. This is this this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. And it was it was amazing. It's like, man, the crowd just just really electrified me. That moment, just to be under the lights for real, like the real lights where you know everybody get to witness the national level. It just it just it put something in me to just let all my not all my skills, but show at least who I was. You know what I'm saying as a fighter. And it's uh, I, I want to ask you about that, right? Because we. We, we were talking about you're ranked by the you know national you know by the international organizations you know you're yeah, highly right. on box rec. People look at you like I want to use Alfonso Lopez right because you came out he saw your record he's like oh, I'll just finish this guy right quick and then he gets dropped and he loses. I mean, do people look at your record and have no idea how good you are? Yeah, all, man, all the time, especially the casuals, especially you know people people not knowing like you know what I'm saying like. I got a lot of losses, but man, there's so many undefeated fighters on there that, that went on to do good things in a in a sport. And uh man, it, it's so uh 
it's not it doesn't it doesn't bother me because I, I don't care. I, I I'm 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 fine with who I am as as a person, as a fighter. Like I know what I can do, you know? It 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 uh it gives people a false sense of hope trying to fight me that don't know, you know. But I'm pretty sure their trainers and coaches are looking at it differently. But at the same time, what it does for me, it just it just motivates me, man. It it makes me want to go even that that much harder. It's it's like a real Rocky story, a real black Cinderella story, like you know, to to go through that, and, and then now I'm 34 years old. I come back and be beating these guys up and knocking them out with the experience that I have, the uh, the experience that I've, I've experiences I've experienced in in fighting alone and sparring. I've gotten a chance to spar with world champions. I got the chance to you know go to get some of those camps and really see how they do it for real, man. Man, I, I it's it's like really for me. Even though my record is what it is for me right now, even still, the sky's the limit, man. It's it's that's just how I feel about it. I don't. You can have. You can think whatever you want to think, man. The opinion doesn't. It doesn't pay me. It doesn't take care of my children. So you know, I got to do what I got to do. So I, I want to ask you about that, right? You return uh, back in February after you know long long layoff. Um, after the layoff, you know what made you want to come back and and, and you know. Were you were you staying sharp? Were you staying focused, or how, how did you get back into it so quickly you know, okay. after that layoff? Okay, so we five year five year layoff. I uh, I ended up getting in a little trouble, right? We don't need to get into it if you don't want to. I, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we don't we don't have we don't have to. Uh, I get I get in trouble. I do some time, and while I'm locked up, you know, people that know me from my from from Beaumont where I was where I was look, locked up at or whatever, they're telling me, you know. Like man, we know what you what you do. We know what you're capable of. Like, don't quit, don't quit. Um, it's like man, you if you're gonna do anything, if you're gonna do anything in the life, chase your dreams. And uh, then another dude will tell me he's like, man, if you're gonna do anything in life, how, what else gonna pay you a million dollars? You know, what else gonna set your family straight? It's like clean up your business and get it together, and that's basically what I, that's basically what I'm on right now. I gotta I'm gonna get my business together. I'm still putting together p- pieces in here and there for my team, and uh, I'm still not signed right now. But most definitely, I'm putting together the business part, man. Like I uh I have, and then I had t- I had two little girls. I have two. I've already had a child. She's pretty much grown right now. I'm a grandpa right now, but uh. Nah, man, my I have two two more beautiful little baby girls, and uh, man, that's that, that's all the motivation I need, man. It's like re re motivation me, re motivating me, rededicating me, man. And it's I want to I want to give them whatever I can, bro. You know, and I, I figure the best way I could do it is you know through fighting, man. I can I can I can still see six figures for sure. I just gotta get just gotta do what I gotta do. I gotta win. So that that starts again. Well, it's all in February, but you know it continues on June, getting you back to that path. Uh, I mean, five year layoff is you know that's no joke. It's a long layoff, but you came back, you got job done, you took care of business. Realistically, you know how many more fights do you think you need to get back to that level? Uh, I say, uh, really, to be honest with you, probably three, two more, two more, two more fights. So three fights this year, and. Uh, Next year, you know, we'll just we'll we'll look to be knocking on the door, like at least top twenty, top thirty, somewhere around there, and see and see what we'll, see what's available. We'll shake out the tree. We'll we'll bump it and see what go down. And I want to um, you know, from there I want to like to just keep moving up, keep moving up and doing my thing, and you know, representing me and my family as a fighter. Like, there's no there's no reason not to. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know. You go in certain circles, they know who I am. They know who I am as a fighter. The real, the real boxing circles, they know. So, I don't see why I I wouldn't get a shot or I wouldn't get an opportunity. You know, even with the record being the way it is, like I've paid my dues. You know, I pay I, I pay my dues. I've, I've I've committed the blood, sweat, and tears. And and right now with my experience level, you it, it'd really be smart for any promoter to really just get with me because. I'm gonna make you a lot of crazy money. They them odds gonna be different. <laughs> them, them, them odds gonna be against me, but hey, the come up gonna be real. Think about it, you know. 
So I wanted to ask you that, right? You've been in with everyone. I mean, your, your resume looks like, you know, that of, of a world champion. Like you've been in with, with so many top-notch fighters. Who is the best fighter you've been in the ring with? Who would you say that guy is really good? When we talk about fighting or sparring? Uh, well, both. Either one. Honestly, who gave me the best work for six rounds? For six, for six, for six straight rounds, he was immaculate. Speed, power, skills, head movement. Uh, was Jermaine Taylor, um, powerhouse, hard hitting, punching. Um, I'd have to say, I'd have to say James Kirkland and Canelo. I have to give, I have to give both, throw both of them in there. They, but uh, Kirkland had way more power than Canelo. Uh, Canelo just had the, the per almost like the perfect blend of speed and power, almost you know. But yeah. it was it was it was good, man. He, you know, great work and uh, fighting. As far as my resume goes, uh, what's that kid? The the I wasn't even in shape, man. The kid from uh the South Park kid from uh Kazakhstan. Um, oh, uh, yo, um. I'm gonna butcher this too. Do Doran Yusinov Yul or something. Yul like Yusinov, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, uh, he, he, he was a uh, very, he was surprisingly, he was surprisingly good. Like, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I, I probably put, probably really shouldn't have even took that fight right then and there. But man, it, it was, uh, it was good stuff. That was yeah. That was in Atlantic City. That was that was a big card. Uh, you had Yal yeah, off on that card, and and Travis Kaufman and Keith Tapia were on that card. Uh, Eddie yeah. Chambers, yeah. Yeah, Eddie Fast Eddie was on there too. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, it's crazy, man. I've been in a lot of those fights, man. I've been main event too. It's crazy. Like they, I've been main event on some of those cards and uh, in my career. And it it's, again, like I'm, I'm the business. The, if you look at it, if you look at it from the how I'm looking at it, you would you would you would you would want to sign me. Even with even the way the record looks and knowing what I know, the experience that I have, like we can we can make them we can make a lot of good things happen, man. Justin Williams, I'm looking forward to watching the comeback. The comeback's always greater than the setback. Uh June 10th oh, yeah. on the Rainy Promotions card. Looking forward to it. Um tell them where they can find you on, on social media. You can find me on uh, Instagram at Justin Deshaun nine, um, Facebook Justin Deshaun. Um, just just follow me, man. It's going down. I'm I'm posting. I'm letting people know. I got tickets for sale. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, Justin. Looking forward to it. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you. God bless. Appreciate you, Gary.